So tune on in, get ready, get your bets ready. We're starting with the prime game Thursday night. The Giants coming off fantastic franchise record setting comeback win in none other than our backyard, Arizona, Westgate. Cardinals blew a 20 to 0 halftime lead. Unacceptable. End up losing the game. Unacceptable. 31 28. 49ers, arguably the best team in football, 2 0. They're getting 10 points, 10 point favorites at home. 45 total points. 74 and sunny at Santa Clara Levi Stadium. Giants play a better game again. It's a short week for both teams. I think Giants do cover this. 49ers win this game. They're just the better team, guys. They're just the better team. This is probably going to be a push, actually. I said cover, but it's probably going to be a push. Give me 49ers to win this game by 10. The line is 10. The total is 44 and a half. I like the over here, so that's with the total of the over. I think Giants do put up some points. Daniel Jones going to make some moves with his legs. Get in there. Anytime touchdown with Saquon Barkley out. What do you see here, Giants 49ers? Yeah, I'm just not a fan of this matchup for the Giants. And in particular, I just think it's really tough. They struggled to stop the Cowboys offense week one. That was understandable. That's a great Cowboys offense. Week two, you come to Glendale, and even though they win that game, Josh Jobs absolutely just methodically breaks them down for the first half of football. Um, so you look at a great offense like the Niners, and I'm just trying to – I'm struggling to figure out how they're going to stop the Niners. I just don't see it. I think this is a blowout from beginning to end, almost a repeat of what we saw in week one. I'll go Niners 34, uh, Giants 10. 34-10. Well, again, I mean, the talent is all there for that to happen. I do expect Debo Samuel lock it in anytime touchdown to get in the end zone. Um I, I think the Giants are gonna have some energy from that comeback win and they're gonna and they're gonna play like it. That's why I think they cover this. But 49ers to me the most complete team in football, and until they start injuring themselves or over penalizing or just making bad decisions, they're gonna keep winning and keep winning and keep winning because this team is very good. Top to bottom, ownership, management, head coaches, roster is very nice and seasoned at this point. Uh, they're they're having a fantastic year and going to keep that rolling to me. So, Giants going to keep it close, closer than I believe, or than uh, Rabbi Cactus believes here. But we'll see. 34 10 or the cover. Moving on to Sunday, Titans, Browns. Titans one and one, Browns one and one. No Nick Chubb, Browns three point favorites. Something's telling me Titans here. I think Titans have found that rhythm. Tannehill, by the way, three picks, one touchdown. Nasty, nasty. <laughs> Deshaun yeah. Watson has been shaky at best as well. Ari Cooper's back. What do you got, Titans Browns? Three points favoring the Browns. Totals 40, 68, and showers in Nashville. I have that strawberry lemonade gummy. A lot of fresh. What the fuck? <laughs> just popped it in my mouth. Man, just bursting with flavor. Um, Jesus. Yeah, I'm all over the Titans. All over the Titans because, yeah, I mean, no Nick Chubb kind of makes him somewhat one dimensional. And, uh, Deshaun Watson, wow, what a bad game for him. A um, couple more of those, and and people are gonna start Did pretty much him? just. No, I didn't. It's just him, the him with the tablet on the sideline. Someone took out the screen and just photoshopped in like a Google search for a massage parlor and wherever they were. <laughs> just the city. Oh, that's funny. That is really funny. Yeah, I mean. I oh, just don't like it. Right? Yeah. No, it's Pittsburgh. There you go. Yeah, I said yeah and, I, and I said that, you know, week one, actually, when we talked about that, I said, man, the Browns defense was a big winner this offseason. Loved what they did. I think the defense is, is for real. But they were on the field a lot last week. And I was like, I don't know if Deshaun's going to keep that up after week one. And, and here we are, right? So, yeah, Titans money line probably by four to six points. At the end of the day, the Browns defense is tough. The Titans aren't fantastic but should be enough to win by four to six 
Derrick Henry. We also like David Njoku anytime touchdown in this game. Um, but the Titans money line, they're part of my money line pick them. I got Niners and Titans. We move on to Falcons Lions. How about the Falcons? Desmond Ritter two and zero. We gave him a lot of, a lot of, a lot of harsh talk. They're still possibly fraudulent, but we'll be able to tell here with the nice one over the Lions on the road. If they can go three and zero, people might start peeking at the Falcons and be like, "Hey, what's going on over here?" The Dirty Birds starting to turn their franchise around. Fair. Well, look, one of the concerns for me going into this weekend for Detroit is they are to be without C.J. Gardner-Johnson from what I've, what I've heard. And, and that's a big leader in the secondary. Um, that injury is huge. He had a little bit of a ding early on in camp and OTAs, and that was ultimately waved off. He was ready to go for that opener. But um, I don't think, and I have to double check, I don't think he's supposed to play this weekend. I don't know if you want to confirm that or pull it up. I know he is on the injury report. Um, yeah, from everything I've heard, he's out. It's going to be a couple weeks. That's yeah, troublesome yeah. to me. This is a Lions team that needs leadership. As, as good as they are with the youth, the oh, core. Yeah. They, got them, they got them on injured reserve, so minimum four weeks. So yeah. that's, yeah, that's a problem. And I would not be surprised at all to see the Falcons go in there and win this football game. So – uh, Lions going to have to be on alert. I think they can win this game. The Lions are the better team, but they're going to have to lock in. Jared Goff going to need a big two-touchdown day from him. No picks, over 250 yards. Um, we're going to see if the Lions are up to the task, but this is a sneaky good game. And and I'm sure with the Sunday ticket package and what we have, the, you'll probably be flipping back and forth with this too because it's, there's some potential there with the game. Totals at 46. Lions are four point favorites. Falcons are my money line favorite on this one as well. Falcons money line pick them. So far, we've got the same teams picked 49ers, Titans, and Falcons to win these games. Saints at Packers 2 0. Saints at Packers 1 1. Saints undefeated streak stops here in Lambeau. I think Jordan Love and the Packers get this one done. Packers favored by two. This is going to be a field goal game, 43 total points. I got the Packers beating the Saints in this game. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, Packers defense, I think, has has actually surprised me more than anything through three weeks in the season. If we want to talk about what's surprised us about Green Bay, it's their defense. I think that group has a chance to be good all year long. I mean, they're not great, but I think they're good. And, and I think that's the reason that they win this Sunday limit Derek Carr, get some pressure on him, really kind of squeeze the box. And uh, it should be enough. I mean, again, as long as the offense for Green Bay doesn't make a lot of mistakes, they should get this good done. I'll, I'll go Green Bay 24, um, New Orleans 13. I like it. Packers cover. I like the A.J. Dillon touchdown in this game. A.J. Dillon, anytime touchdown. Lock that one in. Broncos winless, 0-2, go to South Beach, 2-0, CBS, 10 o'clock game, Tua and the South Beach Dolphins taking the league by storm. Tyree Kill going crazy, three touchdowns. Through. First two weeks, Dolphins win this game, no reason not to. I'm just not sold on the Broncos just yet. I know they got Sean Payton. I know Russell Wilson's still there, but guys, look, it's been a season and two weeks. Russell Wilson is finally starting to look okay. But is it a flash in the pan? Like, is he too much of a dad now? This might be an Fair. issue. You know, they're they're legitimately 0-2. They were awful last year. I'm starting to wonder if the Broncos are even for real, if they even have the talent to get to the playoffs, and it's starting to not look like it. They're going to start the season 0-3. You're not going to go into South Beach and win unless something happens. If Tua gets injured, Maybe you went on, you know, some backdoor bullshit, but the Dolphins are so much better all around. They're better coached at this point. Sean Payton's rusty. Dolphins, money line. Nothing to say. I think they cover this too, by the way. Six and a half point favorites. Dolphins win this game by eight plus. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, Broncos started to come on a little bit. Russell's looked more like himself, but... You know, week one, the offense didn't do enough. Week two, it seemed like the defense kind of broke down. And now we're in week three where I just think the Dolphins, now it's like you had your chances, at least in this first three weeks, if you circle these these games only, 
They, I think they had their chances to get their wins. To me, unless the Dolphins shoot themselves in the foot, this was always a win for Miami. They're just much better. Uh, Tua should have a big game. Battle of the winless. L.A. Chargers go to the Viking ship, U.S. Bank Stadium, where Kirk Cousins and the boys finally get a W. I'm not sold on the Chargers. Vikings win this game, money line all day. Alexander Madison, death threats, racism, anytime touchdown, <laughs> fucking Disney, anytime touchdown, Vikings money line. You heard it here. Nothing to see. I'm just, the Chargers are in shambles. Austin Eckler's always banged up. Keenan Allen's always banged up. I, I just, Justin Herbert is a fucking Disney ass quarterback. He's fucking uh, Zach Wilson on steroids with the mullet. The numbers are huge. The arm's huge, but he just doesn't live up to the hype, man. Chargers can't get it done. They don't get it done. And unfortunately, that's what they're known for. Look, they had Phillip Rivers before who, my God, legend. But again, who did he have to go up against? Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. It just doesn't work. You know, it just, you got to face Mahomes. You got to face Allen. You got to face good teams. And now here come Tua and the Dolphins. Here come all these other teams. I, I just, the Chargers are not it for me right now. They're struggling. They're trending downwards. Vikings got to get this win. You have to win. For the sake of the Viking ship, for the sake of Skull Nation, I'm riding with the Vikings all day on this one. But what do you have? Man, I, I picked the Vikings uh, last week, and it, it burned me. Um, but they're at home this weekend. I mean, they are at home this weekend, and I think that's probably the tilter. Two pretty bad teams, two pretty – Defensively uncertain teams, um, high flying, you know, receivers certainly going to be on the field. I mean, this could be some good football to watch if you're just a fan of of um, of air raid offense and you know just slinging it around because I think Kirk and, and Justin do provide some good entertainment. But yeah, I mean, look, Chargers again on the road. I think it's tough. They're not they're not healthy all the time. Um, I'll go Vikings twenty three to to set to seventeen, uh, but. We need Justin Jefferson to – he's going to have to dial it in and, and take care of the ball because obviously last week you count that touchdown and they, they win that game, I think. so. <clears throat> yeah, this is, again, this is what the Vikings do. This is just historically what they do. They're, they're usually always a pretty good team, but they find a way to lose games, but every game they're in, it's close. It's close. They They can win. They always have talent, and then something falls apart. I, I don't see a way that they go 0-3, and, and if they do, it's time to you know to look at blowing it up and just shoot for the draft, get one of these quarterbacks. You know, there's a couple of quarterbacks in the pro uh, in college right now, uh, which funny enough, we, I don't know if you saw the Dion video earlier where he was telling him, he's like, oh, you guys aren't going pro. He's like, you're sticking around in Boulder another year. He's telling his sons they're just not going pro yet. I'm like, man, <laughs> rough. That uh, is funny. A lot of Shador Sanders Vikings photoshops floating around Skull Nation right now. Funny stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, man, Vikings are, they're just, they got too much for me. And I think they're, uh, they're just too hungry. That last one was bullshit. I think Justin Jefferson's going to play a big game. Hawkinson, big game. Madison, like I said, big game. Anytime touchdown. Chargers keep slipping. Vikings win, get their first one on the season. Um, yeah, and I and that's another. I think so far I've mentioned Lions and and Falcons is kind of a sneaky good game if you're just a fan of of the game and close matchups. This is another sneaky good game if you want to sit down with a coffee on a Sunday and watch something that should be good close football. This is another one, so I I will be monitoring this as well. Very fun game. This is going to be yeah red zone entertainment. Next game again, very low scoring game. But this is where it gets interesting because the Jets haven't beat the Patriots in a long, long time. Now, the Patriots are also winless on the season. So what happens? Is it more likely that Bill Belichick and the Patriots go 0-3 or do the Jets finally beat the uh, Vikings? Or, sorry, do the Jets finally beat the Patriots? You know, it's like... Crickets just infiltrating the community. God, I can't move soon enough. 
Just Jets. back-to-back episodes where I've seen crickets in here after a long stint. Uh, I'm like, oh, we need to go. Oh, a fucking boxing rat. Burns <laughs> pest control. Uh, anyway, yeah, my bad. Continue. Not a legit sponsor, by the way. Burns Pest Control. Not They're not a sponsor of this show. <laughs> you, just, you just happen to see the boxing rat. If, you draw, if you're in Phoenix and you know the Phoenix metro area, you drive down 17, there's a big boxing rat. Burns pest control. You see the sign. He's out there fighting stuff, which makes no sense because the rat's a pest himself. Why would he be boxing the pests away? It's just, it's, it's very <laughs> odd. Branding. Yeah, that's terrible, Brandon. That's a good point. That is not what you want to see as a homeowner. A rat shows up in boxes. It's, just slow down, slow your roll. Who is this? So, camp is fucking in Dagestan just taking wrestling classes. <laughs> The last thing you want rats fucking beating up your dogs anyways off the fucking rails we move back to the nfl bills at commander no sorry patriots jets we're still talking about this um jets haven't beat the patriots in like fucking seven years or something in a regular season game um patriots haven't won this season jets are one and one zach wilson sucks mac jones is a little bit better, but not by much. Do the Patriots win this game, keep the Jets slump going, or do the Patriots move to 0-3 following a loss here by Zach Wilson? And furthermore, follow this up with, do the Jets need to bring in a quarterback, and if so, who? I'm all about the Patriots this weekend. I think they break through. I think they get a win. They're going to force Robert Salas' hand to kind of reevaluate how he's going to go about this season because understandably they're going to be facing some challenges without Rodgers, but there's still guys in this locker room that want to win now. I think that defense is so good that you just hate to waste a year. Um, And I mean, look, I think one of the things you have to look at, and we just talked about him is Kirk Cousins is on that expiring contract in Minnesota. And you don't see a lot of these trades in the NFL. It's more of an NBA thing. But you have to at least think about it if you're New York, right? He's on an expiring contract. The Vikings know that. If they're not ready to commit to him next summer, um, do you get something for him rather than nothing? I think that's probably, if you want to talk about a realistic solution in, in New York, it's not just a nice go. headline. That could be something. Now, will the Vikings entertain it? Does Kirk Cousins want to go there? I, th- I think I understand he has a no trade clause, so he gets to determine where he would get traded uh, should that happen. But that's kind of where my mind would be at if I'm New York, just kind of a bridge guy, again, expiring deal. You get him off the books, figure it out from there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I like the Patriots this weekend. I think Mac Jones has a great game. Uh, Zach Wilson, I think he'll be okay, but Mac is going to outplay him, which will, which will be the difference. Yeah, I think Bill Belichick, there's really no way Patriots can go 0-3. It's just not in Bill Belichick's mind. It's not in his blood. They'll, they'll find a way to win this game. He knows they have the psychological advantage over the Jets, over the Jets organization. He knows the quarterback situation. Patriots win this game. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be... I do expect a total of 37 points, which is so fucking low. I, I do expect it to to go past that. Thirty seven is is pretty low to me. Uh, so give me the total over on that. But Patriots win this game. Uh, Bills at Commanders and Landover FedEx Field. Buffalo favored by seven. Total forty five points. I like the Commanders to cover. Believe it or not, Bills win this game, but I like the Commanders to cover. I'll do you one better. Commanders to win. Commanders to win. Uh, Brian Sam Robinson Howell. Jr. Touchdown. I like he, that. He's looked good. I, I honestly, like, I've watched him, and he looks good. He does. He looks good. He looks the part, right? So, yeah, I mean, I, I like Washington to, to upset, to get the surprise win. Ugly game, low-scoring game. But I've just seen enough holes in Buffalo early on that I believe this weekend we see that that take place. I have a, a comment here from Niner Gang says the Bears. 
Recognizing Man. the bear hoodie there. Depressing. Depressing Thanks for, fanhood. Thanks for, <laughs> for chiming yeah. in there. Niner gang. The Bears. Man, Justin Fields, that screen pass. My God, we'll get to that shortly. Um, Bills at Commanders. So, yeah, you said Commanders money line? My God. I mean, look, I think the Bills are uh, they're a little too good to lose this game. Commanders can morally win this game by keeping it close. You cover the spread, you lose to the Bills by three or four points. You feel good about going into the next week. Home or not home, you you beat or 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 sorry, you lose to Josh Allen on the Bills by three or four points as seven point underdogs. I think I think you got to feel good about that, even though you don't win the game. Uh Bills to me still win this game. And I do like uh Brian Robinson Jr. to get into the end zone in this game. Talked about it earlier. Safe but... bet. Yeah, safe bet. Texans, Jags, AFC, South. Texans are winless. Jags are one and one. You see the articles going around the uh, around uh, X today. Jacksonville doesn't want to pay. The residents don't care about the team. They don't want to pay for the renovation of a new stadium. Um, Jacksonville might be on the move. The jungle cat headed out of Jacksonville could be a likelihood if the if the city doesn't want to compensate them. So that's something to keep an eye on. Jacksonville favored by 10, however, at Everbank Stadium in Jacksonville. 82 chances of rain. CJ Stroud and the boys. I don't like it. Jacksonville should win by possibly more than 10 points. Calvin Ridley, big game. ETN, big game. Anything otherwise? No. Just too many studs out there on offense for the the Texans to really be able to keep up. I think C.J. Stroud's been solid for his first uh, go at this, but Jacksonville in a much more advanced stage of their rebuild. I think um, Trevor Lawrence is starting to click finally. But um, I'm a good quarterback. But if yeah, I mean, if look, if the city's not excited, if the taxpayers don't want to shovel it up. This is a business, and at the end of the day, they might win this weekend, but that could be a loss for Jacksonville if they lose this team because, look, Oklahoma City would not hesitate to name the Oklahoma City Jaguars tomorrow if they had a chance. You know, we're talking thunder color scheme, but just the Jaguars, stop it. That's the People would flock to that stadium, so they're going to have to be careful for sure. Oh, you got, you got St. Louis. St. Louis is out there hunting for an organization. Which That's true. That's true. Just actually, I was going to mention this in the Patriots Jets segment. Should the Jets lose this game, do they reach out to St. Louis Battlehawk, AJ McCarron, and say, hey, <laughs> come sling the rock around because you're better than Zach Wilson? Uh, I don't. Did he used to be a Jet or was that um, the other? Uh, he may quarterback? have been. He, I know he, he was on the Bengals primarily. Um, okay, I'm thinking he, of uh, he did bounce around as a as a backup. You do bounce around. I think uh, I'm thinking of uh, God, whoever was their quarterback in 08, 09, uh, played for he, in for Alabama. He played for the Jets eventually. God, I can't remember his name. Oh, something. Uh, yeah, 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 Greg, Greg McElroy. Yeah, I actually thought he was going to be a great pro. Man, I was just completely fooled on that one. But anyway, um, I thought the yeah. same when the Vikings picked up John David Booty from USC. I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> be a good one. And he fucking uh, evaporated into a practice squad jersey and out of the league before you could blink. Oh, I tell you, really similar situations actually between those guys because both of them were masked by like the fact at those times, those two universities were probably six to seven deep with like five star like receivers that could like be stars in uh, like anywhere and start anywhere in college they had like five or six of those guys so yeah of course greg mcelroy john david booty looked great and we didn't realize this at the time we're like man they're just good too no they get to the pros they just weren't good (laughs) the receivers yeah it's it's a difference when you're just a five-star recruit coming out of small towns just slinging the rock breaking records you go to a college you commit you put up good numbers again you play teams like Northern Colorado, Mercer, and rack up seven touchdowns, scouts start calling you, and then you show up at practice and realize, hey, it's a whole different game 
when Sauce Gardner and Aaron Donald are on the other side of the ball. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Colts Ravens. Anthony Richardson and concussion protocol. This could be Gardner Minshew versus Lamar Jackson. Baltimore should blow this game out of the water. They're favored by eight. It's a total of 45, 76 degrees, partly cloudy, MT Bank, Baltimore. Ravens 3 and 0. Odell Beckham Jr. injured and supposedly getting cozy with Kim Kardashian. There's their latest rumor. Yeah. Um, man, this is one of those games I just won't watch. I just know I won't. Um, it's hey, probably. No I'm, not a, <laughs> I'm not a fucking Ravens fan, and the Colts suck. Like, my God. And it's it's probably best for the Colts as far as like being competitive that Anthony Richardson isn't playing because I think Gardner Minshew at this stage of his career is notably better than Anthony Richardson. I understand they want to develop him. I understand why you start him, but yeah, Gardner Minshew is still better. He has more experience. He's more accurate. So he, I think he'll make them more competitive. But it's still not enough. Ravens by Ravens minus nine and a half seems like a lock to me. Yeah, it, I mean there it's an eight flat. It's going to be an easy get. They win by 10 plus. I don't see how not. Um, you know, barring big injuries, I know there's been some. I, I, I wonder what I have for a touch. Oh, Zay Flowers, book at home, touchdown in this game. Zay Flowers. This other game, the next game, one o'clock CBS, we're moving to the mid uh, afternoon games. The Panthers are winless, 0 and 2, 0 and 1, 62 degrees and raining in Lumen Field. Seattle, look, the Seahawks are they're rainy birds. They're born in the rain. Five and a half point spread. Seahawks tear this out of the water. Rookie quarterback on the road, 12th man in the rain. No, sir, not today. Bryce Young and the Panthers get demolished. Geno Smith, DK Metcalf. Uh, I can't decide who scores more touchdowns or the touchdown, so I have DK Metcalf and Noah Fant here. Seahawks blowed this game out. Five and a half. I don't know what the bookies are thinking here. Yeah, I agree. I think Seattle looks even a lot better than they are this weekend, partly because Bryce Young is is still trying to figure things out. But, you know, also because really his supporting cast hasn't hasn't been that good around him. Um, you know, Geno should throw for three touchdowns if he's locked in. I think we see a return of the 2022 Geno Smith. And um, this might be a game I keep an eye on just to kind of gauge – uh, how, where the Seahawks are, because I think if they win this game, you put them squarely back in the NFC West race uh, with San Francisco. Yeah, Seahawks, again, if they can get there to the playoffs, scary. Scary team of veterans. You don't want to face Pete Carroll. Next game, highly potential for a blowout. Bears at Chiefs. 13 point line, 48 total. I say take the the over in this. I don't think the Chiefs defense is as good as it's been in the last three, four, five years. Justin Fields has to play well to virtually keep his job and keep his uh future in Chicago. Bears got a cover for this to be worthwhile for bears fans but again i don't know if they even want to turn this game on are you going to be turning into the game and is 13 points too much or do do the chiefs just destroy here yeah i mean look look you got to turn it on i mean this is pretty much the season for the bears i hate to be dramatic but for the bears and the fans this, this is this is the season because you can't start the year zero and three Yep. Um, you just lost to two teams that will probably struggle to win nine games. Um, so now you have to win this one. Now you've, you've turned it into where you need to win. And this game's in Kansas City. Um, so this is a difficult ask. But, yeah, I think 13 is uh, – I, I think that's too generous, honestly. I, I, I think – you know, towards the Bears, I think Kansas City probably wins by 20 if they play it on full cylinders. And the problems are starting to mount once more in Chicago. Um, what, one thing that – a couple things that stood out to me last week is that it's not only 
Justin Fields, that's a, that's the concern. He's missing open wide receivers. Uh, he's going through his progression slow. But, you know, you, you saw an interview with, with the Buccaneers, one of their linebackers after the game. I think it was Levante David. I have to look it up. Maybe it's Devin White. But uh, on that game ceiling interception there, he, he said, well, we knew what play was coming. You know, we'd just seen it a couple plays before. So not only has Justin Fields – been underwhelming, but the offensive coordinator Luke Getze, who come off who came off a pretty successful stint in Green Bay, has just been uh, very vanilla, very predictable. He hasn't been able to even really, you know, get things um, anything past just like a very basic concept standpoint. So uh, I'm I'm worried about a lot. I think yeah, the Chiefs win this thing by 17. I, could they win by 20 or more? Yeah, I think the Bears have a little bit of pride still. They're going to try to fight, but I think the Chiefs win by 17. I think this would and could. Again, this isn't – I don't think we're going to see the Chiefs team we're used to seeing over the last couple of seasons. If the Bears want to strike, this is the time. You know, now is Now is the time to do it. This could be the upset of the week. If they get this done, ESPN will be rolling tape of it. If Justin Fields can put a, a day together and the Bears can win in Arrowhead, my God. I'm going to talk about reruns. If you want to get into turning the season around, no better way than to win in Arrowhead. I still think there's too much against the wall. Back's too much against the wall for them. Chiefs are just a better team and more hungry. Who wants to go one and two on the season at home against the Bears after the they played the way they did last week? Chiefs got too much ego, too much talent, better coaching. They should win this game. If the Bears win this game, this is again the upset of the week for me. So something to watch. Oh God. Dallas Cowboys come to Westgate. Why? We don't know. I think it's going to be Josh Dobbs still. A lot of people want Clayton Toon, but Cardinals are just bad. It doesn't matter at this point who starts. 2-0 and Cowboys. This is a free win. Uh, if you want to add a leg tier parlay, money line Cowboys. No way in hell the oh, Cardinals yeah. win this game. Not a chance. This is another home game in the desert like the Giants had last weekend. Cowboys fans are going to overtake the stadium. You may not even be able to see red from TV, honestly. I mean, I could barely see it in that last, that last game from the highlights. Oh, so many, yeah, so many Cowboy fans here in, in Arizona. Phoenix, Plenty. a lot of Cowboys. And they're going to travel well. So, yeah, I mean, Cowboys by 30, I think, is, is conservative. <laughs> Totals 43 indoors at Westgate. Blow the fucking lid off that. Smash the over, hammer the over, add a parlay, add the extra leg. Cowboys and the total, no way it doesn't happen. Impossible, virtually, unless Clayton Toon is the next Kurt Warner and they put him in and he starts fucking slinging the rock like he played for the Iowa Barnstormers. The only way some magical Disney shit happens. 520, 9 o'clock, or sorry, uh, Sunday night game, Steelers-Raiders, two of the toughest, most grittiest you know, franchises historically. Love to fight. Love to hit stick. Raiders are favored by two and a half, and I just don't like it. I think the Steelers are the better coach team. I think the Steelers are the better team. I think they're morally in a better place. Najee Harris finally gets into the end zone. Steelers win this game by a field goal. Flip the spread around. Vegas, two and a half, total 43. I'm saying Steelers won by a field goal. And less than 43 points scored in this game. Yeah, I got Steelers by three or four as well. I think the under is a safe bet. Um, getting some momentum coming off that divisional win. And they think, yeah, they, they continue to keep it rolling against uh, the Raiders. Najee Harris touchdown in that game. Monday night doubleheader to close it out. Monday, September 25th, 415 game is Eagles 2-0 at the Buccaneers 2-0. This is where it gets dicey for me. I'm taking Baker and the boys to upset the Eagles at home. Raymond James is rocking. This Buccaneers team is complete. Oddly enough, 
they made some a couple improvements. They they added some free agents. This team has improved over last year. The Tom Brady Buccaneers are not as good as this team. It's weird to say, but Baker Mayfield has this team playing in a weird way. Uh, Levante David, this team is just, they're tough. They're ready. Buccaneers win at home by a field goal. I like the Eagles here. Um, I'm a firm believer that they took this last week as a, as a, as a wake up call. I think that was a good reality dose for them to kind of refocus and understand the task at head, which is a really chippy Buccaneers team. They've got some new faces. I think Baker Mayfield feels like this is his first time playing in a team sitting where he's had really good receivers around him outside of his time in college. I think this is the first time where you can look at the wide receiver room and say, if it's healthy, it's pretty complete. Um, they've got a great room out there. And then that, that defense is, is the real deal. I mean, Tampa's defense has playmakers at every level. The front seven is really sturdy. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely, I think they're going to bring it. But I do like the Eagles to win this. I'll take the Eagles minus two and a half, but not without some drama. We got it going both ways here. Two and a half, Buccaneers on my side, two and a half, Eagles on his side. I like Chris Godwin to score in this game. Hasn't got in the end zone this year yet. Mike Evans has two. Chris Godwin time. Into the end zone, anytime touchdown. And finally, Monday night, late game. Rams at Bengals. Cincinnati favored by three. We don't know if Joe Burrow is going to play. Bengals look like they're in a bad place. Uh, one of their receivers is going to be out soon uh, via trade. I like the Rams. Rams are a complete team. Uh, they've shown with Stafford healthy and with their coaching back on par, they're a very good team. They hung with the 49ers. They blew it in the end. This team, to me, could get to the second round of the playoffs, even the NFC title game against the 49ers. We could see Rams 49ers in the NFC title game. I like Rams to win this game. Bengals move to 0-3. Uh, Burrow's just got a rehab at this point. I don't think it's worth the injury. Either way, Bengals do got a score, and Jamar Chase or Joe Mixon will get in that end zone. Rams by a field goal. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of a rematch from the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. That'll be fun. It'd be better if Burrow played, but obviously he's not going to get in there. So, yeah, I'm going to take the Rams as well. Stafford, two touchdowns, no picks. Uh, Bengals fans uh, probably going to start to panic here soon, and I know it's early, but uh, it's just been an, un an unfortunate start for them. Well, I mean, here's an interesting and dangerous theory. So, Joe Burrow, should he not play? Bengals move to 0-3. Uh, they decide, hey, let's let's get Burrow healthy. Let's sit him out a couple weeks. You know, therefore Bengals lose a majority of their games, miss the playoffs, and they end up with a top 10 pick. Uh, one of these guys, either Boyd or Higgins, are not going to be around. You're going to commit to J uh, Jamar Chase long term. Bengals draft Marvin Harrison Jr. Pair him with Jamar Chase. You got a you have a Randy Moss Chris Carter duo right there for the next 10 12 years uh with Joe Burrow that's lethal that's dangerous that's enough to you know again Kurt Warner Isaac Bruce Torrey Holt these are the type of offenses this could remind me of uh Bengals got to decide hey whether they're in on trying to salvage the season and win or whether they want to shut down Burrow get him healthy get him some more weapons you don't even got to go receiver they have enough talent there's so many good receivers you can go O-line. You can go D-line. Get this team better. Make this team better. Burrow's generational talent. Again, like I said, he reminds me so much of Joe Montana. Um, Joe Burrow is the new age Joe Montana, and you need to give him the type of players and talent and the health to, to get to that next level because this Bengals team can win a Super Bowl with Joe Burrow around. Got to get it done. Absolutely. Yeah, something to watch. Um, so we'll see Rams this week. For sure. That is our slate for this week, guys. College football week four, NFL week three. Thanks for sticking around. A lot of picks, a lot of topics. We obviously didn't get through everything in college football. If your favorite team was missed, definitely check it out on ESPN. But we did cover what we felt like were the best matchups 
um, from college football and the NFL. We'll see you next week, Tuesday, 730 Mountain Standard Time, live right here. Tune in, drop your comments, drop your picks, tweet us, DM, let us know. We'll see you next time, guys. Fun times await. Let's get ready for more pigskin. <laughs>